how to do anything specific in Excel. Um, instead, we're going to look at um, some examples of how not to do charts in Excel. And you can take a look at these files if you go to this web address here old.briarcliff.edu slash department slash CIS slash Excel slash 2013 slash 006 charts dash bad and that's a space examples.htm so here are a few charts that were actually submitted as assignments and uh, we're going to take a look at them and see what's what should have been done instead uh, the whole point of doing a chart is to make it uh, easy for somebody to interpret a lot of data uh, it's a whole lot easier to look at lines or bars than it is to try and interpret you know rows and rows of numbers so if the chart that you create doesn't make it easier to understand the data that you've got then there's no really no point in doing the chart and that's pretty much the case with all of these examples here uh, first of all you should always have a title on the chart if there's no title on it uh, the reader really has no idea what it is so that's a problem uh, the units here on the vertical axis aren't labeled so you have no idea what those are uh, you know it does have a legend on it uh, and it's a line chart and line chart should always so show how something changes over a period of time so it does have time units across the bottom uh, so those are all good things about it but still you can look at this chart forever and never have any idea what it is that it's trying to explain and uh, one other uh, problem here. I don't think this is actually a problem of the person who uh, created the chart. I think it has to do with the data that was available. Uh, we've got one year intervals here all the way except for uh, from 1990 to 1993. And uh, the problem with that is that you know this interval here, this line should really be three times as long. All of these lines from 1990 to 1993 should be three times as long as they are. So it looks like there was a real steep decline here, but actually that should be spread out over three years. And so actually this point should be like right over here, giving it a slope, you know, like that, which isn't nearly as steep of a decline. So uh, if you can, uh, the intervals down here should always be equal intervals. Okay, now let's take a look at the next one here. And this one, yeah, let's scroll up a little further. Um, this one again doesn't have a title. Um, the legend over here it says series one, series two, and series three is what you get by default if you don't tell Excel what you want uh, the legend values to be. So series one, series two, and series three do absolutely nothing to inform the reader about what the chart is trying to convey. Uh, the numbers over here on the side are not labeled again and also with numbers this big you should probably put commas in them just to make them easier to read and uh, this is just kind of an aesthetic thing here but uh, these numbers are awfully big it looks kind of crowded over here as well uh, if you look at the horizontal axis here you'll see that there's uh, just yellow bars there's there's no blue bar there's no red bar um, but there's room for a blue bar and a red bar if you notice the yellow bar occupies the right part of the area for Cuba so there should have been a red bar here there should have been a blue bar here but there's nothing and what probably happened is that the person who created the chart uh, selected some empty cells and empty cells are going to get uh, interpreted as zero and so I'm guessing that two columns of empty cells were selected and that's why we ended up with the chart that we did so uh, you need to uh, carefully select your data before you create the chart too. Uh, here's one uh, national health expenditure amounts it does have a title on it that's good um, and all the pieces of the pie are labeled and I like the fact that they're labeled around the side here which is the way I think it should be with a pie chart rather than having a separate legend over here on the side but um, there's no labels you have no idea what these numbers are we've got a number and a percent for each one of them but we have no idea what they stand for um, so it's a pretty useless chart. Another problem that I have with uh, this particular chart is it's a three-dimensional pie chart and you know it may look a little cooler than a two-dimensional pie chart but there's a problem with three-dimensional pie charts and that is uh, take a look at this little piece of the pie here this uh, you know bright pink piece up here around 12 o'clock and then take a look at this light green piece over here at 9 o'clock uh, they look like they're pretty comparable in size 
but I took the same chart and I flattened it out and made it a 2D chart and dropped it down uh, here and when you flatten it out you can see that the pink up here at 12 o'clock and the green over here at 9 o'clock are huge uh, there's a huge difference in size this is almost three times the size as this one but when you flatten out a chart to make it 3d if it's pie chart uh, what you end up doing is you end up exaggerating the size of the pie that's on the vertical part here on 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock and you end up minimizing what's here at 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock and uh, that's probably not a good thing to do uh, you want to be able to accurately convey the information so uh, I would stay away from three-dimensional pie charts okay here's another example uh, another bad example and this one uh, again has no title uh, this is probably the only line chart you've ever seen that does not have units of time across the bottom line charts should be used to show how something changes over time um, and another serious problem down here you know if if this were showing how something changed over time and this was the number 10 and this was the number 20 then you could figure out that the number in between is 15 but there are 10 data points on each line here and there are only five labels down here at the bottom so we know that the first one is national health expenditures and we know that the third one is personal health care we have no idea what this is uh, there's no way that anybody can figure out what naturally falls between natural health expenditure, national health expenditures and personal health care. So the reason that happened is Excel will do this by default. If the labels are so big that they're going to overlap, then it will only display alternate labels. It figures that you're better off being able to read half of them uh, than not being able to read any of them by having them overlap each other and make a mess of it. Um, so you should always uh, make sure everything on your chart is labeled again there's no units here uh, there's no label describing what these units are uh, with numbers this big you really don't need two decimal places this should have been formatted uh, with zero decimal places uh, so there's a lot of uh, stuff wrong with this whenever you do a line chart make sure that you always um, have time units across the bottom some kind of time units that's what line charts are for to show how something changes over a period of time and down here at the bottom we have um, another pie chart uh, one problem with pie chart is characteristics is misspelled. There should be a C in here. Um, I don't like pie charts that have a uh, legend over here on the side. Uh, what it does is it forces the reader to constantly go back and forth between the legend and the, uh, the pie. So it's much better if you just get rid of the legend completely and put the labels around the outside of the pie. Um, and um, I don't know. I have a problem with this title here because I'm not really sure what that uh, that title means. It's possible that the person who created the chart uh, and anybody that they would be showing it to uh, understood what this meant, but I, I think it's kind of a vague title. So your title should always be descriptive and tell exactly what the chart is going to do. So those are some, some things that you should stay away from when you're creating charts. And in the next video, we'll take a look at uh, what you should do when you're creating charts.